What's up, guys? I'm here at the uh, the Asus room here with JJ. What is up, man? It's great to meet you. Yeah, man. Fantastic to finally meet you. Thanks for everybody checking this out. We've got some awesome stuff. CS 2023. We're here at the Asus suite, and I think we're going to be showing you some awesome gaming hardware. I think so, too. What, let's let's get started. Yeah, so I think first and foremost, of course, uh, we've got the new update with the 47 Ti, which just launched, so we're going to continue to have what you would expect with the Tough Gaming and the RG Strix line, but I know a lot of people are really excited. They were asking, hey, are you going to do something again with the Noctua series? So yes, we're officially confirming at CES that we will have a Noctua series-based graphics card. This is a little bit of a teaser here. Maybe not be 100% final in terms of the overall design, but you can expect something. There'll be probably more information towards the end of Q1 timeframe if you are going to be interested in really the coolest and quietest card in its class. It's going to once again be the Noctua edition. So before we get over to a cool little update on the Apex, also for you guys that are not aware, we have also confirmed and we are getting pretty much ready to ship this month the new ROG Strix, but in white. So we will have the white base graphics cards. I'll give you my address before I go. <laughs> we are going to have both the 4090 and the 4080. So if you guys are interested in having a RG Strix graphics card in white, it looks absolutely stunning. Uh, and you want to check it out. And keeping in that white theme, of course, uh, we reintroduce a white PCB, which we haven't had all the way back since the Sobronco Tough Series, which featured a white PCB. And uh, the Apex was so popular, it sold out. It was a limited edition board. We no longer had it available, but due to heavy demand, we are gonna be bringing it back. So starting in March, stay tuned. If you're interested in getting the end all be all when it comes to overclocking, or you want that stunning white aesthetic, guess what, it's coming back in March. Okay, <laughs> all right, Sweet. let's go ahead and Shout continue Shout out to Ben, on. by the way. So, What's up, brother? Love the build. Yeah, so this is actually right here, a uh, brand new introduction. This is our ROG gaming chair. Um, but you can tell that right off the bat, this has actually got quite of a different vibe in terms of the overall look and feel. The proof is in the pudding in terms of the overall fit and feel that you're going to have in there. Now, one of the big things you're going to have that's different right off the bat is that this guy has a mesh-based material for high level of breathability. That's it's so essential. I really I love mesh chairs like this. Yeah. yeah. This is great. Yeah. Now, the other thing that you might notice right off the bat, too, is also going to be the comfort that you feel right here on these armrests. So these are actually made out of PU foam, so they feel quite soft and quite comfortable. Traditionally, a lot of times these are gonna be hard, and when you put your elbow in here, yeah. it's an immediate pain point. Yeah. But these have a nice level of comfort. The seat, fully adjustable in terms of depth. You can go in and you can go out. I like um, the straps on the side too, telling you what each lever exactly. does. Exactly. And uh, when we move over here to the headrest, really nice, soft, comfortable headrest. And this headrest has a huge amount of flexibility. I can go ahead and bring it all the way down. I can go ahead and bring it all the way up. Nice. I can go ahead and push out. I can find that area that fits most comfortable to me. Now this area is kind of interesting. People go, what the heck's going on here? Well, you know, Asus actually has an amniotic chamber. We can do a lot of acoustic management testing. So nice. guess what this is? This is actually a baffle. It's mm -hmm. actually designed to mitigate noise. So uh, moving over here, this is uh, maybe one of the big stars of the show, of course. You know, we were the first to do 120 hertz, the first to do 240, the first to do 360. So we had to be the first to break that 500 hertz barrier. So this is a 500 hertz monitor, all the way stepping up to 540 hertz. Uh, what that ultimately breaks down to me is, again, this is going to be a actually a high performing TN based panel. Now, some people immediately kind of roll their eyes and go, oh, my. But if I didn't tell you, and if you looked at this from the viewing angles, from the color rendering quality, it's actually a modern TN and it's quite capable. We actually also have high quality factory calibration as well to give you good color gamut performance right out of the box. Um, on top of, like I said, all the premium aspects you have here. Now some of the other cool things you got, you got G-Sync module built in for advanced variable overdrive support. You got an ES Saber DAC and amp also built in for improved oh. audio quality experience in there as well. And nice. uh, we can't show it to you, so you'll have to get a little bit tight to see it, but we've got a brand new base design that we're developing for this model. Oh, okay. And the really cool thing that we're done here is that it's actually a compressible design. So you can actually swing it out and you can compress it all the way tight in. So if you're one of those guys that really loves to do your angled gameplay setups, right, where you want to get in nice and tight, you can compress it in and you can save that nice desk space. But a really exciting one. Uh, you guys interested in our first ROG controller? Yes. All right, so I've been looking is, for a new controller. Honestly. This is a really big one for us. I go ahead and feel it in hand because for me, the big thing, of course, with the controller is you want fit and finish and really nice premium build quality. So a uh, couple of nice things is that no rub, rubber grab, grips, right, that can kind of wear away over time. Just a nice, soft, dimpled, textured finish on there, which gives you a little bit of enhanced grip. 
We are, of course, on the back. If you notice there, we got the trigger locks, right? Yeah. So you can go ahead and action in racing. And then when you want to jump in your FPS, just switch your trigger locks and bam, you're going to be good to go. On top of that, really nice, clean and smooth pots. You're also going to go ahead and have a mute button right there for your audio. And this also integrates an ESS Saber DAC and amp. So really? improved audio quality right there. Just jack in your headset and you're good to go. With the Rakiri Pro right here, this is the Rakiri. So I want you to go ahead and hold down that Xbox button for me. And here we go. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Did we just level trains. up? We just <laughs> took it to the next level. So you got a full OLED live dash display. So this actually gives you your battery life information, profile information. If you want to swap from, let's say, racing to shooting to... RPG, whatever it might be, you can see that. You can have custom GIFs and animations, right? You got that cool RGB lighting zone, and we're even looking at how we can actually maybe customize the lighting to actually align with gaming. Right. So maybe you could actually have like health monitoring built into the lighting patterns, right? Could have some really interesting flexibility. We're also the first to be fully certified for actually three, uh, three connections. So you got Bluetooth, 2.4 gigahertz, and USB-C connectivity on this model. And this one, compared to the standard Rakiri, you see you can move up to actually four rear buttons. So you can really have that deep level of customization. I mean, there are a lot of controller options out there, to be fair. 100%. But for those who really like to be in one ecosystem, want to have one brand of things, yep. it's like you're not just putting your label on something. Yeah. To say, well, here's the controller that goes with your other stuff. No, there's a lot of thought that went into that. I like yeah, it. Yeah, and, and we hope that really, even if you're maybe not, maybe this is your first ROG product, that's entirely okay because we've also put the design effort even into the software. We've got dead zone compensation, advanced remapping, customization to the motors, all kinds of stuff in there. So again, this really should stand alone just as a quality controller option. But of course, if you want to throw this into a full ASU system, it's going to only be better, right? Right. Um, so this guy right here, it's our new flagship chassis. This is the new Hyperion. So this is gonna be a follow-up, not a replacement to the Helios. And you can see this guy is really bold and distinct styling. It right. actually carries in over that X-frame exoskeleton design that we saw on the chair. A beautiful die cast aluminum right here, right? It has a really nice feel to it. These are entirely functional, so you can actually lift the system with this, which especially with a system of this size is a nice benefit as opposed to trying to lift something from the bottom and yeah. you would break your back. And then the front panel pops off yeah. and then and you then just scream at your exactly. neighbors and you're then you're, and then you're and yeah, And then you start to get aggravated because you broke something and you're like, man, I just bought that, right? Yeah. Um, so here, front IO is massive, six ports, dual 20 gigabit connectors, yes. which is a rarity amongst high-end chassis. 20 gigs. 20 gigs. That's right. And also full 60 watt charging support with our Asus motherboards as well. So we're really giving you a rich level of IO connectivity. A full 420 millimeter support in the top as also full 420 millimeter support in the front. We got these really nice kind of gold doors that open up. Got the aluminum right here with the glass. Tons of space in there, fully accommodates EATX. You got this beautiful RGB light panel in there. Now, the really cool part about the RGB light panel is you can remove it, you can go ahead and add fans, but the thing that I absolutely love here is that you can actually remove this and you can use it externally. Just have so it let's, on display. Exactly, yeah. and have it on display. So if you replace fans in there, it's not just something that's gonna get thrown into the box, you can actually still use it externally. And we are looking at maybe looking to release uh, some 3D print files that offer uh -huh. additional levels of flexibility and customization. If you maybe want to have something that you can throw in there that we haven't produced, and you can put that in there. So okay. that's pretty cool. I so. am a little surprised to see the adapter though. Do you, do you guys not, do you have an ATX 3.0 power supply on we the actually way? Do, we do actually have an ATX 3.0 power supply and actually all of the current Thor 2 series, uh, we will actually be offering customers a free cable in North America so they can actually have the native 16 pin cable. So we, we will have actually the Tough Gaming ATX 3.0 power supply coming this month. Uh, in the not too distant future, we'll also have the ROG Strix Aura uh, power supplies that will also have that 16-pin uh, native power cable as well. That's good, to, good for me to know. I yep. see. I, I, I help. I help people a lot with specking out systems and yep. knowing what's coming is yep. very helpful. For me. Yeah. So next up here is the dream monitor for a lot of people. This is the ROG Swift, the PG27AQDM. Mouthful, but really the star of the show is that 1440p OLED. 0.3 millisecond response time, and just absolutely stunning aspect ratio in terms of that 27 inches with the 1440p. It's got a really nice clean base design to it. Yeah, that's new, different, isn't it? Yeah, new center mounted little uh, option there for the OSD, but this will also support the display widget and the brand new display widget center, which will even be more advanced. Right. Now, some really cool things that we've done here is that on the back, if we go ahead and pull this guy out here, 
you're going to see this beautiful thin bezel design yeah. and this is actually metal on the inside of this guy right here we've actually got an active cooling solution the oh. active cooling solution helps us to actually keep lower temperatures for the panel so less burn in less chance yep. of burn in less chance of burn in and it also allows us to achieve a higher peak brightness rating so this is a peak hdr 1000 which is quite rare for an oled based panel you also got this really cool little tripod mount on here Sweet. which means you can go ahead and add camera microphone light also being oled maybe you want to reduce the likelihood of some burn in you could actually take one of our xg mobile displays mount that on there and maybe do your discord or maybe put your text all that stuff on there on that secondary display yeah. and just keep that for your gaming on your oled right yeah so this guy uh we're going to be looking to release it hopefully by the end of q1 time frame um we also did confirm g-sync validation on this guy as well keep in mind also factory calibrated from the factory which is another advantage from us we're right. be looking at about a 1100 dollars price point right well it's it's a halo monitor basically yep. in its size in its size category so moving it down here oh boy here we go we've got the azoth so this is something that we've worked on for quite some time i think we've really done a great job in our peripheral lineup and our keyboards we've already been offering keyboards with sound dampening foam pre-lubricated switches bin switches hot swap pcbs but with the azoth we kind of want to take it to the next level and really do a lot of cool stuff that you're seeing in the custom keyboard market so the first thing was uh, we went with a gasket mount design to give us a little bit of nice flex. Right. In addition to that, we went ahead and improved the stabilizers as well to give you that really nice consistent feel on things like your caps, your space bars, and on the enter. So really nice consistent feel across the board there. Does, yeah. We also went with our RG NX switches, which if you're not aware about something called gram force deviation, a benefit of uh, gram force deviation on our end is that we bin the switches. The industry standard is plus and minus 10 gram force. We actually do a tighter tolerance of plus and minus five gram force deviation. You're like 10? Yeah. We can go tighter. Pedestrian. Yep. Pedestrian. Uh, okay. Yeah. In addition to that, we also have a different actuation and reset point. So like a traditional red switch might be a little light to the touch. We actually go with a little bit to higher uh, actuation rate, but we also have the same actuation and the reset point. So it's pretty much simultaneous. When you hit that, you get that nice bounce back up. Okay. Now in addition to that, full PBT double shot keycaps. We also shorten up the keycap profile to reduce a little bit of keycap wobble. On the inside, three levels of sound dampening foam. So we got silicon, poron, and foam all integrated in there to reduce the, that pinging in the body. Although it wouldn't be super crazy because this is already a hybrid. So we've got metal on the top and then plastic on the bottom. Now some people might go like, JJ, why didn't you guys just go all metal? Well, this is a gaming keyboard. And the reality is that even in some of the premium segment that have finally started to offer also wireless along with wired, their 2.4 gigahertz implementations are really not gaming grade. If you were to measure the latency, you'll find that the latency is quite poor. As you introduce more metal, you actually create RF mitigation issues and so, uh, right. or attenuation yeah. issues. Yeah. Yeah. And Absolutely. so here, this chip is a massive chip. This is our latest generation Speed Nova wireless chip. And the really impressive part about this is that it's effectively almost about the same latency on wireless as you have on the USB-C connection. So we really are offering a gaming grade wireless standard. So you can feel comfortable and confident that if you want to go fully wireless, you can go for it. Fantastic. And the uh, really cool part to this is this is full tri mode. So you can go Bluetooth, wired right. or wireless. We integrate a little storage bay for the wireless adapter in there as well. And uh, we even threw in Mac support also. And for those also wondering, we will be offering both a tactile version with our ROG NX brown switches as well as with the ROG NX red switches. And uh, it is a hot swap PCB, so five nice. pins. So if you want to still go ahead and change it out, you can. And uh, on top of that, to round it all out, this whole accessory kit comes with the Azoth. Okay. So okay. you get your Crytox 205. You're going to get a brush. You're going to get a not crappy keycap puller right, and keycap switch opener. Switch separator right here. Yeah. Switch opener. Exactly. You get even a little lubing station. You get three additional switches. Your nice RG paracord cable. All inside the box. I mean, if you were to go to Amazon and just buy this little thing, that'd be like probably 40 bucks. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And now you get that all in the box and we're targeting uh, somewhere between about 250 to about a $300 price point. We think a really, really solid offering. If you're looking for just a great built, well-built keyboard that allows for also a great degree of customization. You want to go in there, maybe move the switches a little bit more. Maybe you want to swap it out. Maybe you want a little bit louder keyboard and you want to take out maybe one of the layers of sound dampening material, go for it. Right. But we've really given you a great baseline. And I did forget to note, you can also support screw-in stabs. Okay. Okay. Right. That's, that's actually really cool. Good to know. 
we've got, this is the brand new, uh, of course, RP Ace Mouse. Why don't you go ahead and just feel how light that is, let me know. Hold, hold, hold on, I'm trying to keep it from floating away. Jeez. Yeah, so this is really going head to head with the Logitech Super X right here, super light. This is 54 grams. We have a brand new actually biopolymer based design. So this biopolymer allowed us to reach this really ultra light weight um, and still have really great structural integrity. Um, you of course are getting benefit to that 100% PTFE feed, which allow for really, really nice premium, super smooth lighting. Of course, it's on our new hone mat right here. Now, some of the other really cool stuff that we've got, you're gonna see that inside the box, we also include grip tape. This grip tape is really nice quality in terms of the grip tape, just super smooth, super clean. I not feel that. It's also going to come with a premium RG Aimpoint sensor. This is a 36,000 DPI based sensor with a 1% CPI deviation guarantee. Wow. The only ones in the industry that are guaranteeing that. On top of that, you've got our RG premium micro switches, very similar to a premium like GM8 based micro switch, 70 million clicks with a gold plating electro junction plate, which helps to reduce oxidation, which ultimately yeah. leads to things like double click. Um, you're going to have five onboard memory profiles. A rarity among something this light is full tri mode, Bluetooth 2.4 yeah, and USB C, wow. 90 hour battery life, same speed Nova wireless chip that we also have. So, ultra high performance in terms of low latency. Now, the really, really awesome thing that we did here, we didn't stop there. So, we have this amazing partnership with Aim Lab, and we're the first to really offer this comprehensive seat where we have this setting optimizer experience. So what actually this allows you, instead of kind of having to go to prosettings.net or go to Reddit or debate in YouTube comments on what's a good setting for you, you can actually really quantify it. Go through the training modules, 10 minutes a piece, setting, mouse DPI, outcome tuning, low diff, uh, LOD, so your lift off distance, and that can be all mapped and stored directly to your mouse on hardware so profiles. So you're going traveling, you're doing some esports, do little yep. esports travels, yep. you got your profiles right there. So getting ready to round things out right here. One, this is just quick 30 seconds, guys. If you want a really nice, just well-built, high-performance external USB, feel this guy. Oh, wait, no, no, oh, you were supposed to drop it. It's no, no, okay. I'm trustworthy. It's okay. So, drop so it. yeah, no problems right there. Then I can totally, enclosure right yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. This, I can stand on it. I can okay. throw it in water. Oh, it doesn't stop. matter. Um, but this guy right here, 10 gigabits. Uh, it's really built well. Just go ahead and pop that off in there. Put something in there like an SN 550. Mm -hmm. Nice 10 gigabit USB drive. This is a, a little bit of cost down version than we have as compared to something like our RG Arion, right. which is a little bit cool, a little bit more flair because it's got RGB on it. But if you want a cool little portable SSD, check that guy out. So right here, this is going to be the new split chamber chassis. This is the GT502. Right. So this guy is shipping literally this week. It'll be coming in at about 160 for the black and 170 for the white. On the white, we also did even off-white uh, or essentially gray grommets. And to my knowledge, the only manufacturer that even did all the internal cables in white. Nice. I've got mesh filtering, tons of airflow on the rear, and another update compared to something maybe like an 011. It's on this back side right here, you can fully put in a 360 cooling solution. Wow. So you can go and put in either fans, a cooling solution, or storage all on that back side. Of course, you've got PSU, tons of cavity space. These straps, fully functional. You can actually lift the system in there. So again, you don't got to lift from the bottom. You notice on the bottom too. fingerprints on the glass, handprints on the glass. I hate that. Yep. I Plus, we've got increased inlet space right down here at the bottom for a little bit more additional airflow and a really nice pop-off design, uh, which allows you to have top-level access as well. So a lot of design thinking went into this guy. I think a really great option for those of you that are interested in going with the split chamber type setup, which is quite popular. I and want you guys to know, this is still only like one side of this room and that's how much <laughs> stuff now, they've got here it's crazy the last piece of component that i think is pretty insane right here these are our flagship latest generation wi-fi 7 gaming routers if you want the hotness when it comes to covering you know 30 40 50 60 devices we're going to have you covered this is the brand new rog rapture this is going to be the be right there 98 this is quad band okay so four bands three 10G ports on there, including wow. a 10G WAN. You've got a 2.6 gigahertz quad core SOC, one gig of DDR4 memory that's built in this guy. And it still maintains advanced features like AI mesh support. So even if you want to pair two of these guys together to have a Wi-Fi 7 AI mesh enabled system, you could do that. Um, and then for those of you who might not necessarily need to go to crazy quad band, we've got tri band right here with the ASUS RTBE96U, still have an advanced quad-core SOC, 
two 10G LAN ports as opposed to the three 10G LAN ports and still all the robust features including AMS support and all the awesome features that we offer in the ASUS WRT firmware. And then over there in the corner, um, a little bit of an update. We just launched those a little bit ago on the market, but that is our Wi-Fi 6 ROG Mesh Network product. Yeah. So actually in the box, you get two of those units. Huh. Really fantastic if you're looking like for look high-speed yeah. tri-band mesh coverage with 2.5G WAN support. So if you're looking for maybe coverage in the like 3,000, 4,000, 5,000 square foot coverage combs, right. that could be a great option. Plus they look cool, you know, so uh, that rounds out pretty much all that we've got new for component hardware at CS 2023. There's even some other cool stuff that I'm sure you guys can check out in some of our press release. Maybe we'll talk about it. Right. New ultra wide monitor that we came out with some other tough gaming displays. Got new mobile displays, new crazy pro art device monitors. I, I was, it, was, it was really awesome stuff. We'll take some B-roll of that and show it to you guys. But uh, I, I appreciate your time. Jay. Yeah, and, not and a again, problem. It's just been fantastic talking with you. Dude. Yeah. Seeing all the streams and everything. Yeah, thank, thank you so much. Thank you so much. And uh, if you guys uh, let us know if you have any questions, feel free to go and drop in the comments. I'll see if I can go ahead and follow up with you guys. If you have any questions too, feel free to check out ASUS PC DIY group or even email us or check us out on Instagram or any of our social platforms. Uh, if you want to email PCDIY at ASUS.com. There you go. Thanks guys for watching. Stay tuned for more CES 2023 coverage. Take care. We got a wild bin. Oh, snap. Bin. You gotta say hello, bro. Huh? The camera's on. You gotta say hello. Hey. Say hi. What's up, guys? How's it going? Okay, okay. Turn it off now. Turn it off.